Hey, ladies and gents, and welcome to the Controlled Interest Gamecast. I'm your host, Jared Weich. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Dominic Orlando. I'm, it's time to move on from Elden Blinging, at least for a little while. Um, there's other things in the world. There's other games to play, as much as, as hard as it is to, to accept that. There's other games to think about, even when I wasn't playing Elden Ring, just thinking about it all the time. So this will be the last podcast intro for a while where I mentioned Elden Bling. Dun, dun, dun. Episode 251. Uh, speaking of Elden Ring, if you missed last week's episode, episode 250, our episode 250 special, was an Elden Ring spoiler cast, which was pretty cool. We talked about our favorite bosses, favorite mechanics, the strengths of Elden Ring, the weaknesses, because yes, not every game is perfect. Uh, we I went on a whole diatribe about the ending, which I've done multiple times. Uh, but we also talked about uh, would we want a sequel, uh, DLC ideas, all of that good stuff. So if you have any interest in that, please go check it out. It was a fun time. The second ever spoiler cast we've done, like I said before in that episode, we want to try to do more when we can, when Dom and I play the same game. Uh, because the only ones we've done are uh, Last of Us Part 2 and Elden Ring, which, hey, if you're going to only have two spoiler casts, at least it's those two games, two of the best games of all time, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so we're off to episode 251 now, regular podcast, back to your scheduled programming. First up, Got some bad news this week. A couple of delays uh, for two games that I was actually pretty interested in. And I, funny enough, I think these are two games that you probably were not going to play regardless of when they come out, Dom. Uh, the first one is Metal Slug Tactics. Uh, this is being delayed to 2023. This game looks beautiful. Uh, if you've been a fan of the classic Metal Slug uh, arcade games, this is taking that, putting it in a tactics genre and, and kind of boosting the art style in that HD 2D that's been popular over the last half decade. Uh, so it's a bummer it's not coming out this year, but then again, you know, the fall is coming around. We got God of War, Ragnarok on the horizon. Let it get delayed. The other one that was actually a little bit more surprising um, because a lot of these licensed games often have like set dates they have to release by in terms of fiscal years, which makes sense for this and the way they specifically worded the delay is Midnight Suns, uh, which a game is that I was looking super forward to from XCOM developers and uh, was introducing some card game mechanics to that formula. And uh, we had a cool trailer at Summer Game Fest where they introduced some of the villains, basically like enchanted evil demonic versions of the Hulk and Venom and all of your favorite Marvel villains. And they stated that it's going to be delayed for current gen to later this fiscal year and for prior gen following a later date which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. So to me, this has to do with probably optimization. Remember, this is from the developers of XCOM, which are primarily PC titles. They have come over to console, but obviously they made their home on PC. And the fact that they're coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles first, and then they're eventually coming to the last-gen consoles, that is kind of a strong indicator, right, Dom, of why this probably got delayed, among other circumstances, obviously. Imagine, it, it just feels so similar to Cyberpunk, where the the next-gen versions of that game in PC at least worked, um, but then the last-gen versions were broken. So, obviously, that game needed a delay probably entirely, but if they had just done this and just delay the last-gen versions which feels so odd. Um, but, yeah, I think you're probably right. Optimization kind of a thing. Um, getting it to work properly on the old consoles that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, which is a bummer because then that means the only big Marvel games we're getting this year are just the PC ports of Marvel Spider-Man and Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. Correct me Has if I'm wrong. Been... I'm trying to think. Has there been any good DLC for Avengers? Uh, War for Wakanda came out, but that was last year. Okay. That was the Black Panther expansion. That and then Spider-Man came out, but that was just a character. Uh, I'm trying to rack my brain. Oh, um, Jane Foster was put into the game. But once again, that's just like a character edition. It's not like an expansion the way War for Wakanda was. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 hasn't had updates in a long time. I'm assuming. Uh, anything of note anyways. Uh, what else am I missing? Um, probably the mobile games, right, are probably the biggest releases in terms of updates that we're getting, uh, which is a bummer. But hopefully when Midnight Suns comes out, I I'm hoping early next year, uh, in that January, February, March slot at uh, 
turns out to be good because I'm excited for it. Maybe this delay leads to Xbox coming over and being like, hey, we got this blank check for you. We want you to be on Game Pass, which would be pretty cool. Because as much as I'm excited for this game, I do worry about its sales opportunity because XCOM on its own is pretty niche in terms of the genre. And though Marvel's um, obviously super popular, the moment people see this gameplay, it's going to turn off a lot of people in terms of putting their money up for it. And I think Game Pass is the best place for it for people to try a game genre they're probably not super interested in off the bat. So we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I this isn't in the news because... When I originally read it, it was mostly clickbait once you actually read into it, which was, uh, you know, in a response to PlayStation saying Call of Duty going exclusive for Xbox would be dire to the industry because of Brazilian uh, regulators looking over the Activision acquisition. Uh, Xbox provided documentation that basically says like, hey, PlayStation pays for games not to be on our service. How is that any different? Which was a pretty cool story strike back because it's like yeah all of them do the same thing how is it any different with call of duty for to go exclusive um and the way the headlines were written were playstation pays companies to not put their games on game pass which in and of itself is pretty spicy because it's like i could see a world where playstation specifically is like yo square enix we're going to pay you x amount of dollars just don't put your stuff on game pass you can release it on xbox just please don't put it on game pass but when you read into it the documentation provided by xbox is more specifically talking about oh, PlayStation publishes this game, so therefore it wouldn't go on Game Pass, which is also a weird thing because MLB The Show is on Game Pass and that's published by PlayStation. Uh, or uh, Final Fantasy Remake, right, where we're still wondering when that's coming over. So though the headlines were spicy and very clickbaity, and there are some truth to it, it wasn't as uh, dire of a, of a report as I thought it was because at first I was like, oh, this is going to be juicy to talk about. But when you read into it, it's like, oh, yeah, makes sense. Both companies kind of do this, but... Kind of the like, response from Xbox makes sense. So, like most exclusivity deals that exist all over the place, like oh, certain clothing can only be sold in in my store. Or this show can only be streamed on this platform and not downloaded from that store. You know, like yeah, I, th I guess you have like there potentially an argument to be made about the scope of certain games. Call of Duty is pretty large, but it's certainly not the largest that's ever been exclusive or anything. Yeah, it just seems like... But, and yeah, monetarily, I could see like... It. Yeah, you can make an argument like, why are you complaining about Call of Duty when you didn't make the same complaint for Minecraft, right? And then when they said like, oh, we could have... It's industry defining for the genre. We couldn't put a team together to make a game of that quality in that genre. And it's like, well, people can point back and be like, well, people, you could say the same thing about any Naughty Dog game, right? It's like, mm, how can exactly. anybody compete with that? type of narrative storytelling in a triple a video game so that whole situation's the, weird i think you're like your better argument and it's not to this point yet would be like in the general consolidation of like it's not just call of duty it's all these different studios and publishers now that microsoft has been acquiring like um but again it's not quite to that point where i think you can try to lay that card out necessarily but that to me is more like exclusivity deals happen but eventually um, you might have to have some kind of government agency step in and be like, okay, too much in one person's hands, right? It's bad for if it's bad for competition or whatever. But I don't think we're quite to that point. Uh, I think if if Microsoft were to next acquire EA, then it'd become a real issue because of that's yeah. when you're starting to play with because then you're bringing in they're going to have the only uh, uh, simulation football game on the market uh, and a lot games. of stuff there. Yeah. Which you can say like, well, yeah, but PlayStation has MLB simulation licensing, but it's like, yeah, well, at the same time, they were kind of forced to put it on Xbox. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's the whole thing there. We'll see what happens. I just, the headlines are very juicy, but the story there was just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, let's talk about Cult of the Lamb. Are you familiar with this game at all, Dom? We're going to do a little review roundup. Yes. Quite a bit. I'm pretty excited. I haven't started it myself yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm game to talk about it. Yeah, so this is a game that's been in a bunch of showcases uh, showing off trailers for it. It's a neat little indie game. And uh, so Cult of the Lime is a Dev Devolver Digital published roguelike farm simulation hybrid indie title that released everywhere on August 11th, 2022, which is the year we're recording this. And it currently sits at an 84 on Metacritic and an 85 on Open Critic, which are really good scores. Um, and when you hear farm simulation, that might scare you off if you're not somebody who's in love with a Stardew Valley 
but farm simulation is the genre think more of it like a community manager where you're bringing in these people into your cult and you use them for various purposes and you can name them and it just seems really cool when we get these games that are hybrids of genres that you wouldn't expect and they end up working out well so i wanted to go over some of the reviews i pulled uh from all aspects so we got a review in the 80s we got an 85 and we got a 90 um i wanted to kind of hit all three we're going to start off with the 80 this is from michael goroff from egm he says quote Cult of the Lime is two games in one, part roguelike, part management sim. Neither of the halves feel totally fleshed out on their own and provide little challenge. Still, the synergy between the two halves is undeniably compelling, and the art style is infectiously adorable, giving you enough reason to play through one more in-game day and then one more until you've been awake for an entire out-of-game day, feeling totally brainwashed. So he gave the game an 80. Uh, obviously, he's a bit more critical of it, um, but obviously still says that the combination of the two genres is kind of... The sum of its parts are better than the individual um, sections. Next up, we have Elliot uh, Elliot Atard, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, Aidard, uh, from Checkpoint Gaming. He gave Cult of Lime an 85. He says, quote, Cult of Lime doesn't just surprise and delight with its visual prowess and unflinching cultist motifs. It also hooks you with its addictive and adaptive gameplay loop. There's not a dull second as you move through two equally important and varied genres of game that mesh beautifully together to create a unique and captivating experience. A lack of endgame content may disappoint some Colony Sim fans, though it ultimately does little to sour what is genuinely novel ga- a novel game that knows exactly what it wants to be. End quote. So once again, talking about how the two genres coming together, also mentions the art style, which I think is kind of apparent when you see this game in action it's like regardless of how you feel about the gameplay the art style is so particular and it sells it and lastly we have the highest score which was a 90 given by jessica howard of GameSpot. she says quote cult of the lamb as a standout title is a standout title in both the roguelike and simulation genres as well as a -a one-of-a-kind entry that exists in the middle of both of them whether you're exploring the dungeons or expanding your cult the experience is enjoyable and challenging and a little bit more than a and more than a bit demented with how surprisingly dense each of these parts are the fact that all the pieces come together as smoothly as they do is a triumph so uh yeah uh this game was on my radar in terms of i'm curious to see how that game does but between these reviews what i've seen from the kind of funny folk talking about it and just general chatter with this game coming out uh, I'm probably going to end up picking this up and playing it, Dom. It seems interesting. I love, obviously, we play roguelikes here and roguelites. Uh, it's the other side of it, the simulation part that has me intrigued. Because that's, depending on how that went, I think it could push people away. And for me, the fact that it's dealing with cult members and having to decide who to sacrifice, it's twisted enough that it gets me interested in that. What about you? Y- yeah, and ultimately, the the idea, the twistedness of it, the idea that the whole point of the the game and growing your cult is to like awaken who's basically Satan, the devil. Yeah. Um, so you're very much like a bad guy um, in this weird, cute yet you know satanically twisted game. But I really like the idea of it having like these two distinct styles of gameplay in it, and all these reviews, I don't know, they really point that out. It, almost as if like it's not been done many times um i think of firstly like persona which is very much um you know a jrpg dungeon crawling game but also like a high school simulator kind of thing um and social things and that or like um the most recent fire emblem game right a strat a tactical strategy game but also similar like a school simulation game as well with relationships and all that sort of stuff um i feel like there's a lot of examples of of games that just have two very distinct types of gameplay kind of not necessarily intertwined but just adjacent to each other and uh, elements maybe feed each other um, here or there but you know are you're playing each part on its own you're in cult of the lamb from what i understand yeah you're going through um you know generated dungeons um and doing combat and all that kind of thing and then once you're done you're in this village simulator picking up people's poop um picking up your followers uh poop until you build them an outhouse and things like that i guess so yeah i'm with you i was kind of like had an i had an eye on this and was curious enough but uh, to me yes yeah, it's, it's like pretty good i feel like it's pretty good uh, review so far and i'm i i am stuck right now 
Um, we'll probably get into you know uh, what we've been playing, but I've jumped across a bunch of different games, and nothing's really sticking and feeling good right now. Um, so maybe I do. Like, I try to you know when you try to dip into the backlog, and yeah, sometimes like it's just it's just not feeling anything. So maybe yeah. this is what I need just to grab something new and I'll feel more motivated. And it might benefit from its release date too, because there isn't a whole lot coming out outside of like sports sims like Madden's on the horizon. But other than that, we have to wait a little bit for some of the games that a lot of people are excited for, obviously like God of War mm-hmm. and other titles. Um, yeah, I, I'm very interested in, uh, we might end up doing a review on this game if both of us end up playing it. And uh, it might be one of those indie hits this year. I'm trying to think of what other indies I've played that came out. Did Rogue Legacy 2 come out this year? Yes. Yes. So that's one. What other? Tunic. I didn't play Stray. Uh... Stray was other, fun. I did play Stray. What other indie titles? I'm trying to think. Um, I'm probably missing something. Was Tunic something. indie? I feel like. Yes, Tunic's it's... indie. Hundred percent. It was made by one guy. Oh, really? One guy. I didn't realize. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, was one I, I started, um, and I like, but for some reason I just don't want to keep playing it. I don't know. It's hard to explain. <laughs> Uh, same. Uh, next up, let's get to our Fantasy Critic League eighth month check in. So, if you listen to the podcast at the beginning of the year, we usually do our predictions for the year, which we'll get to next week, and we do a Fantasy Critics League. Our Fantasy Critics League is called the Video Game Illuminati. It has three people: it has me, Dom, and our third seat, uh, Chris Nunes, who has been very busy these days, has been able to join us. We're not going to be going over his part of the league. We're just going to be going over Dom's and I's. Uh, and hopefully we'll have him back when we do a full recap of everything. But, as it sits, with four months of releases left on the calendar for 2022, it's time to take a look at the current standings and the controlled interests official Fantasy Critics League called the Video Game Illuminati. Dom's published uh, publisher, Firelink Studios, currently holds the lead at 128 points with 14 of his 20 titles, because we can have, we're capped at 20, 14 of his 20 titles either released or being locked into place. Um, not a scam incorporated Jared's publisher, my publisher on the other hand has racked up 109 points with 12 of my 20 titles being locked or already released. So I have two less titles locked in or released, uh, and 19 less points. Now here's the interesting thing. So fantasy critics league also has projected points. I'm projected to beat Dom 182 to 181 with the current rosters, Whoa. which is pretty funny uh, when you go to some of the rest of this information. Uh, here are some of the stats regarding each lineup. The highest scoring game for Dom and I this year, for me, it's Elden Ring with 31 points, which is ridiculous. Um, which is uh, what, like almost one third of my points. I have 109 total, and that's 31. Uh, for Dom, it's uh, Horizon Forbidden West with 18, which is still a really good amount of points for a game in a year without Elden Ring. Well, who knows? Uh, we'll see something... the game we're going to talk about later. I don't remember exactly how the scoring works, but yeah, 18 for Horizon is, is really good, but it's like points, um, Metacritic points above 90 are like weighted heavy double. or something. Like, They're double. double, yeah. So that's why Elden Ring, um, even though, yeah, a couple points higher than uh, Horizon, but many more points higher in the um, Fantasy Critic scoring. So Yeah, big, big boon there. Easy first pick overall. Uh We'll see how next year goes. Uh, low, low scoring games this year for us. Uh, I have Nintendo Switch Sports, which nagged me one point total. At least it's not negative. I And I didn't count uh, zeros for games that aren't releasing this year or game. You know what I mean? That just, it's a whatever. I'm low score for games that have released. And for you, it's Mario Striker Battle League, three points. Funny enough, our lowest scoring games are Nintendo, Dom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we bet on Nintendo, and Nintendo didn't come through for us, unfortunately. Uh, our next game release, uh, so I have a Plague Tale Requiem, which is coming out October 18th, 2022, and your next release is Splatoon 3, which comes out September 9th, so I have a couple of months, unless I add something, obviously, that comes out between then or you do, um, so we'll see what happens there. Both of those games can score pretty high, and I could also see those games scoring, I don't think that either of them score below 80, I think I'd put a lot of money on that, but... yeah. Who knows? We'll see what happens. There's sequels, which can either give you a little boost or kind of hurt you a little bit, but we'll see. Uh, how confident are you in Splatoon 3? Very. I think the Switch has been... I don't know. It's just been missing a little bit. 
and you know Zelda got delayed, which was uh, a bummer for me because I had also picked that game. But just in general, it feels like the Switch has maybe been a little dry on first party stuff. And then, like you also mentioned, uh, Mario Strikers and Nintendo S- Switch Sports kind of performed a little lower than at least you and I had hoped they would. So I feel like people are hungry for a good Switch game and a Switch like a multiplayer game on Switch feels even more rare. Um, especially like a particularly competitive one and I, people love Splatoon. I don't get it, not my thing, but people are into that shit and uh you know, I probably should have checked what the first two games scored, <laughs> but um I have high I have a lot of confidence in Splatoon. Same uh, for my game. I have a lot of confidence in a Plague Tale Requiem because it seems like it's, though I haven't played the first game, it's on my backlog. I'm going to play it before this one comes out. Um, from what I've seen from people's responses that it's taking the core of what people loved of the first game and adding a lot of combat depth to it, which it didn't have necessarily the first time around. And I think if they nail that, it can score really well because the narrative of that game is so strong from what people say. It like really does a good job with uh, the themes it has running throughout it. Uh, next up, the biggest title yet to release. Now, for me, it was a little bit harder to come up with it than yours. Uh, obviously, Dom's is God of War Ragnarok. Uh, that thing can score very well, and it's going to be the biggest release of the year. Uh, for me, I, I tied it between A Plague Tale Requiem and Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope because I think they're kind of on the same level for different reasons. Um, I'm, neither of them match up to God of War Ragnarok in terms of what it possibly can be. Um, so I, I kind of tied in there because I didn't really know who, which to choose from. Because though I have high hopes for a Plague Tale Requiem, it still is kind of like an indie-ish title, uh, whereas Mario plus Rabbids is obviously first party, first game reviewed well. So we'll see. Uh, next up, let's go over our counter picks. So for me, my first counter pick was Ghostwire Tokyo. I was pretty down on this game, which, Dom, that game came out this year. Think about that. Weird, right? Yeah, no one talks about it. It actually scored a 77, so I got negative 7 points from that, which is pretty tough. Uh, kind of a stinger. That was going to score lower than that, but hey, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And then uh, Dying Light 2, which also came out this year, which I forgot about. Uh, I counterpicked minus 6. So minus 13 points there. Not not good. Uh, my third counter pick is this year we made it, so we had to do three counter picks. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy, which I'm pretty confident is not releasing, so I'm pretty strongly gonna probably gonna get a zero there, which is good. That's kind of what you want. Obviously, you love negatives, but if you can just get that zero locked in, uh, you're you're in a good place. For you, Dom, your counter picks: Suicide Squad kills the Justice League, which you kind of locked in as a zero early on, because I think that game got pushed to 2023, like in mm-hmm. March or something. It was very early on. Uh, a Plague Tale Requiem. I'm, I'm interested to see how how nervous are you about getting negative points there? A little bit. What did the first game score? I think it was something decent. You pro- check it on your end. I don't have. Yeah. I, I'm not. Don't have the capabilities currently to check that. A Plague Tale Innocence. And for those who are listening, if you're not familiar with Fantasy Critics, any score above a 70 gives a negative points to whoever counterpicked it. Yikes. So Metacritic said 81. Yeah. So that'd be, if it scored the same, it'd be negative 11 points for you. Yikes. Yeah. I'm nervous. Probably going to eat some points on this one. <laughs> uh, but you also counterpicked Nintendo Switch Sports, which only got you negative one. Which I think if you can get around like negative two, negative one, zero, you're in a good place. So that was a good pick for you as well. Uh, one other thing I wanted to go over before we move on to what we've been playing is uh, some of the games were kind of locked into uh on our lists so for me uh sea of stars i'm locked into the way it works is if you drafted a game and it's not coming out this year you can't drop it but if you picked up a game and it's not coming out this year i think i made it like you can drop two of them or something like that uh so sea of stars i'm locked into unfortunately that got delayed to 2023 so zero points forza motorsport which i was so focused on it coming out this year once again drafted it yeah yeah got a zero there and then the only other one is, uh, let's see here, Hollow Knight Silk Song, which hasn't been confirmed to not be this year, but come on, realistically, I'm kind of locked into zero points there. And I think that's it. Yeah, because I didn't draft Mario Sparks of Hope. So yeah, only two game or three games I'm going to get a confirmed zero on. Uh, Advanced Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp might also be a zero, the way things are going. For you, we have 
uh, Breath of the Wild 2, unfortunately. Um, Redfall, unfortunately. Uh, Atomic Heart, did that get delayed out of this year? Must have. It hasn't on Fantasy Critic, but that might end up being a zero for you. Uh, Bayonetta 3 is coming out this year. At least has a release date. Splatoon. Also have high Somerville is another one where you could get zero on. Yep, Somerville. Uh, possibly. And then Modern Warfare 2 is coming out this year, obviously. So we're in a pretty good place. I'm excited to see it. This is the closest we've been <laughs> the, mm-hmm. uh, since we've done it. So I'm glad that I'm actually in the race this time. Uh, you have $61 in budget left. I have 50 Uh Yeah, we'll see how things play out. Going to be interesting. Like I said, next year we're going to be going over our predictions. Now, let's talk about what we've been playing. Uh, I have a couple of games I wanted to mention. So uh, is that okay if I take the floor first? Yeah, go for it. Uh, So first up, I've been dabbling. I'm not a big fighting game guy, but I do like Smash. I've been dabbling with Multiverses, uh, which is a free-to-play Warner Brothers uh, fighter that's a Smash clone. Have a good time with friends. Out of all the characters in that game, I was like, oh, I'm probably going to be either maining, you know, Batman or Arya Stark or, you know, some characters I'm attached to. Turns out I'm a Superman main. I've been playing a whole lot of Superman. He's a brawler. Those who are familiar with Smash, in my opinion, he plays most like Ganondorf in Smash, which is my main in Smash. I usually like the big, hulking, powerful guys. Like, I'm a King Day-to-Day main and a Ganondorf main, who are two of the big brawlers in Smash. Uh, so Superman just kind of came naturally to me having fun with it. I guess my one complaint is that you can only really play either solo online or duo online. So if you have a party of three or four, which when I'm on, uh, online with friends, it's usually what our party is, is at least three or four people. You can only do custom matches offline, which is kind of a bummer. Cause obviously those don't go towards like challenges or the battle pass or anything like that, which sucks, uh, but it is in beta and it is free to play. So it's like, I'm not going to complain too much at this point, having fun with it though. I'm not a huge fighting guy, but it's, uh, in terms of my perspective, it's a fun enough time to hop in and check it out. Uh, game pass recently released two point campus. Are you familiar with the two point games, Dom? No, I've been hearing a lot about this campus one though. What's going on here? So two point is like Sim City or those type of games where you build out these simulations and you have like goals and each of the individual characters on the map have like things that positively or negatively affect them. You have to like hire janitors to make sure that the place is clean. Uh think of it like Sim City or Sim uh it's where you make amusement parks. What's that one called? Oh, roller coaster tycoon. Roller Coaster Tycoon. So it's like that. It's like a management thing. This one obviously is focused on campuses. Um, I tried Two Point Hospital when that came to Game Pass a couple of years ago. Uh, wasn't really my vibe. I'm not super uh, interested in making hospitals and well-running ones. This one's cool, though, because the maps are all different in terms of the theming. And then once you get to a certain point in the story, you can do a sandbox mode where you just create your own. And the way the story works is each one's a map that you can get up to three stars and they all have their own themes. Like one of them is called Ravencroft and you're building a campus in a castle in the hills and you can make all the classes classes wizard themed. So it's basically like you're making your own Hogwarts, which is really cool. Um, it's like any other management game where you have to... Uh, you know, your students come into school every year and they're like, okay, we need this class. And then once you get through that year, you have to make sure you have the the following classes advanced and built in the game or else your students are going to fail or not graduate. You need janitors, like I said before, you need bathrooms. You're working all of this stuff where you need to appease both the staff of the, of the campus as well as the students. And there's a lot of um, customization in terms of how you place things, where you place things, uh, you know, customizing both the way the inside of the buildings look and the outside. And it's very good at scratching that part of like your brain that's goal oriented of like, I need to do this and then I'll be rewarded with this. And then I have to do this and it kind of builds on itself. Um, the other themes that I've checked out, cause I've been playing through the story and then I unlock the sandbox mode is you can build a sports focused campus down where your goal is to build like a competitive sports team on your campus as well, which is cool. So it's not just about building a specific school. It's about kind of working towards whatever theme your map is. 
Um, depending on the map you choose, you have to worry about heating or cooling your buildings uh, with uh, different items, which is really interesting. There's a lot of tools built into the game that make it easy. So like if you can push like two buttons and you get an overlay on the map of like these are all the hot areas where you need to cool down or these are all the hot, the cold areas that you need to heat up. But like I said, that's map specific. So if you don't want to deal with that type of stuff, you can just go to one of like the weather neutral maps. Um, and I, I got hooked to this game for a, a whole day. I put like six hours straight of it. Uh, and I was just hooked to chasing goals. At this point, I'm kind of over it in terms of I'll come back to it and dabble with the sandbox when I want to. But I got like the most of what I wanted to from that experience in that single um, time period. But it's fun. It's Game Pass too. So there was no monetary commitment there. And I was able to hop in and have a blast. Which like we've mentioned before, I think with Game Pass doing that, I go in with less reservations. And I'm more willing to accept what the experience is for what it is. Without having to debate in myself, oh, is this worth it? Did I just waste money? You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. type of stuff. Which is always tough. But, yeah, if you're into any of those simulation-type games, I definitely suggest it. I think a lot of the tools are really user-friendly. It works on console, which is always a, a, a weird thing with these type of games of, like, how good is it going to translate over. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun time. If you're interested at all, I, I suggest checking it out. A small download, check it out, delete it if you're not interested. No biggie. And lastly, Dom... I fully completed Bug Snacks, got the thousand gamer oh, score, man. had a blast at that game. Uh, wasn't that tough of a game to complete? Um, because over the course of the game, if you're invested in enough, like the hard, quote unquote, hardest achievements or trophies in this game, are to make sure that everyone survives the ending, to catch every Bug Snack, and then to get uh, to get ten hats in the game. The way the hats thing works is. I'll go through this as quickly as possible. There's a barn in the hub city that has a picture of a location. That location is where a bug snack will spawn with a random hat on it. You just go there. If you're able to catch it, you're good. So you can you can clear that out really. It took me like 10, 15 minutes to do that because I would just fast travel, which the cool thing with this game too is it has fast travel. And then with the current consoles, it loads so fast that it, you can like blaze through that stuff. Um, catching all the bug snacks, it came kind of came natural to me, uh, playing through the game based on the stuff you had to complete to move the narrative forward. So that wasn't too tough. There's maybe like one or two I had to clean up at the end. Uh, but they were a, a breeze. Um, one of them gave me trouble. I just Googled how to catch it and it was very easy. And the last one, uh, having everybody survive, it's the typical mass effect thing, Dom, where as long as you do the, not the, so there's main quests, there's side quests, and there's um, like favors. The favors are things that go towards getting items for your customizable house. The side quests are very limited for specific characters, and then the main quest is the main quest. As long as you do all the side quests for the characters, which I thought was interesting because you learn more about them, um, you get that last achievement automatically. So that wasn't hard either. Um, it was a fun game. Like I said, it was a good mix of a uh, weird uh rick and morty humor with uh pokemon mechanic uh i thought the story was both funny and engaging enough to drive me to the end like i wanted to know what happened to certain characters because this isn't a spoiler at the beginning of the game you get dropped off on this island dom and you find out that the lead explorer who brought everybody to this island to investigate bug snacks is missing and not only is she missing her girlfriend is also missing so the whole game is about you restoring the community of getting everybody back to the hub town because everyone went their separate ways when she disappeared because the guy they left in charge isn't the most likable person um so part of the game is you bringing the community back together and then the other part is going through each of these locations and finding clues that lead you towards what happened to those two people and it's really cool it has a crazy ending it has a post credits scene that kind of leads you to oh there could be a sequel which is really fun I had a blast. Uh, I'm kind of bummed I didn't play this game when it first came to PlayStation because uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, I didn't have to pay for it because it's on Game Pass, which is great. Uh, yeah, if you're at all interested in Pokemon games or the weird Rick and Morty humor, it's a, it's a must play. I think it's really fun. It's not a long experience. I think in total, it was maybe seven and a half, eight hours, and that's including me achievement hunting as well. Oh, uh, it's not a long not investment, and especially now where we're in this middle ground of like 
waiting on God of War Ragnarok or these other games. Should we get Cult of the Lamb? It was like perfect. It was, I did the thing you said, Dom, went back to my backlog. I'm like, I want to play Bug Snacks. I'm going to check it out. And it immediately hooked me personally. And yeah, I just wrote it all the way through. Nice. Nice. I didn't, I, I know you were interested in it, but I didn't, uh, I wouldn't have predicted that kind of praise. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's it's really fun. Like I'm not trying to, you know, hype it up any more than it needs to be, but it's especially for me who loves like the Pokemon thing of like going out and catching specific things and then it's so weird. Um what's the name of the the game that's coming out this year that we talked about uh with the gun aliens high on life? Oh yeah. I think that's what it's yeah. called. Yeah, it very much is in that vein or Trover saves the universe. So, I really enjoyed it. What have you been playing? You said you had a so, conundrum or something, right? You're like, I don't know what, what I'm doing. I'll start with um, what I did play and finish, which I mentioned was Stray. Um, so that came onto PS whatever tier the heck um, system they have. So I was able to play that. And, yeah, not not a super long game either. I think it was like seven or so hours, um, maybe a little less, but really unique and different. And I'd recommend it to just about everyone. Um, so, like, gameplay wise it's not it's unique in that you're obviously a cat and you're doing a lot of cat things and um you're primarily doing you know uh, solving puzzles basically and roaming around the world retrieving things for people that kind of stuff um but the puzzles are all kind of like cat oriented if that somehow makes sense like you're doing things that like only a cat could do um you know jumping onto ledges and crawling through little holes and um i don't know all sorts of good kitty stuff not a litter box though that i used at least that i found in this game so you know none of that um i mean you find toilets in games that some games you can use toilets you know what i'm gonna dock stray one point in my dom review scale for not having a litter box that's functioning anyway um yeah, like all the puzzles, all the, the gameplay was pretty fun. There's like a section of it in the middle where you actually have um, uh, a weapon, more or less, which is actually just like a light that kind of shines on these little um, virus bugs that are chasing you, which kind of leads me into talking about the world itself and the story is actually really freaking cool. And that's what I didn't expect. I'd seen in trailers that it's kind of this like robot inhabited weird little slum village right and there's no humans it's just you the cat and all these weird looking robots and the 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 premise is essentially that's all that's left because humanity created um this little virus that ends up chasing you um that that was created as a as a means of getting rid of waste because there's obviously too much waste um too much too much trash and it's you know bad for humanity but then this virus thing they created ended up backfiring and it kind of killed everything um but anyway, like actually talking with all the robots and um, the the weird, it's kind of like cyberpunky, like but just downtrodden world. And the robots are also like cool and unique. Where like they have so much personality, each of them, even though they're not voiced, they just kind of make little noises as the text displays. But um, and so you're obviously uh, not obviously, but your plot as the cat is you kind of fell down accidentally into this slum and you're just trying to escape but along the way of course you help out some robots and do some things and you have kind of a larger impact on that ecosystem um, so it's not like super creative um like plot wise necessarily but it, it was kind of to me like the world that it all existed in and the different places you explore and see was just really cool um, i really appreciated it and there's like that initial place that you've seen in trailers I mentioned, like the slums, and then there's a uh, one other larger town that has like a nightclub scene, and um, there's a prison you go to, and all sorts of cool places that um, I wasn't necessarily expecting. So I had a ton of fun with Stray. It was really cool. Definitely the best game I've ever played where you play as a cat. I think I'm. I'm trying to think. Is there that. another game where I've played as a cat? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh. Hmm, that's a good question. Yeah, I mentioned Never that before, and I couldn't think of anything else. But it was a ton of fun. Like I'd, I'd, it, it's really easy too. That's the thing is like anyone can figure this out. Just about um, compared to 
uh, the conundrum I found myself in after finishing Stray was uh, I wasn't sure what to play next, and I have Game Pass turned on now. I still had PlayStation Plus, whatever, which now has a bunch of games that come with it, which when we talked about a few weeks ago when they first announced the lineups, um, I was very critical of it, but I'll come around a little bit on the middle tier. I forget what it's called, um, but one above the you know the, the existing tier where you get two games every month and online but that middle tier the catalog that comes with that pretty darn good actually um my problem was i've played all those games basically um so there's well, and then there's the whole yakuza <laughs> thing right that recently happened but, where yeah. that's a whole thing like some of the yakuza games are on one tier and then the other ones are on the other so yeah it's crazy oh yeah i did that is silly um luckily for me i've still not apparently that Yaku- the yakuza stuff is just top notch but um it's like gibberish to me. I, maybe one day I'll give it a shot, but it's kind of hard to picture it. Um, Wait, yeah, so real quick. I wanted to ask a question. One of the mm-hmm. criticisms, maybe criticism is too strong of a word. But one of the things I saw pointed at that game is that it was much more closer to What Remains of Edith Finch than it was to a platformer. And I think that might have caught people off guard because I don't know if some people were expecting it to be like, a hardcore cat platformer and not more of like an exploration game. You know what I mean? Uh, that seems like one of the one of the issues I think some people had because they went in with one expectation when it actually ended up being a different type of game entirely. Yeah, I could see that because it's definitely not a, I wouldn't call it a platformer, right? You are, yeah. in, in a sense, yeah, you are platforming. You're jumping from ledges and onto things and stuff like that, but it's very controlled. You can only jump when prompted basically and everywhere it's 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 a bit more fixed than that it's more about the exploration and the puzzle puzzling so yeah if you went into it expecting um yeah kind of a cat version of i don't know mario or some (laughs) platformer really even in any sense you probably would have been let down i could see that yeah sorry go ahead what so what was your conundrum following oh so whereas i said stray um very easy to pick up and learn for anyone to get into. Um, one game I did try that came to PlayStation Plus was uh, the remake of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, which somehow I never actually played growing up any of the Tony Hawk games. Um, I'm not, not like, even Underground or anything? Yeah, none of them. Oh, wow. Um, you know, I had some friends in, like who, who had those games and probably watched them play you know, a bunch, that kind of thing, but I never actually played myself. Um, I, thought, I always thought it was cool. Um, I've never actually skateboarded myself for sure, but I always liked that and, and the, kind of the culture around it too, and the music and things like that. But what I found was um, this game is so cool and a really well done remake because I, I had to go look up what it, you know, what the originals look like. And it's definitely like a top notch remake of a game, games. And then, you know, they put them in, together in one package. Um, and, you know, I'm customizing a character. I'm giving him some, some cool shorts and shirts and all that. And obviously some, some sick vans and all that kind of thing. But, um, the controls and actually playing the game, it's like, if you watch me try to play this game, you would think I've never held a controller in my life. (laughs) It's the way it functions is just so unlike any other thing. Um, you just basically you're on a skateboard, but you're automatically always going forward always. And that to me is just like blasphemy. I'm like that. I have no control. I can't be always going forward. That's crazy. Um, it doesn't... Um, it, it just really complicated. Uh, really f- finicky. As far as I can tell, it's like probably the most realistic a skateboarding you know, simulator could ever be. Um, and, well, there's sk- the skate games, maybe. So I might be wrong on that. But like the, the physics makes sense. So if you're... Um, not, they don't. It's a little exaggerated, obviously. You can jump high and grind on walls it doesn't make any sense so in that regard it's more arcade than simulation for sure yeah but like yeah you jump and or rather you ollie and you know you have to obviously land with the board sideways if you try to look perpendicular then you're just going to eat shit um because for some reason every time i go to ollie or you know jump off a rail or whatever it is i just instinctually want to land facing like shoulders facing square and forward just like a is if you're on feet, that obviously will not work on a skateboard. And I can't, like, break this muscle memory for some reason to, like, just twist to be sideways. I, it's been so difficult. And 
and then like always moving forward it just like it just kills me yeah i I don't this the controls of it i just cannot latch on to whereas i feel um it would just come so naturally to like most of the other people my age who grew up playing this stuff um me yeah (laughs) you know but i just like i was like laughing at myself i'm like who am I? No, I, I like pretty much any video game I've ever picked up. I can figure it out um, and at least be competent enough. A shooter or, you know, a third person game, a platform or whatever. Made I can, you like, sit there and self reflect. You're like, who am I now? <laughs> yeah. I felt like when, you know, you're with your, your, your little cousin and they want to play a game and, but they can't figure it out. Um, that's what I felt like, except about myself. And it was, you, you know that feel. gif of uh, the Benjamin Button gif of the guy him aging rapidly. I could just imagine that being you sitting on the couch. <laughs> that's that's what it felt like because everything about this game was like so cool, and I can certainly appreciate it. Although I, do, the structure of it is a bit odd, as far as I can tell, and there might be more, but I just can't get to it because I hardly unlocked anything. But it's kind of like you just get like two minutes or three minutes in each stage, and that's it, and then you get to keep on repeating it over and over. You're trying to do collect all the stuff um, and get enough points in each stage and, you know, meet all these different specific goals. They're kind of like trophies, like, you know, collect each of the skate letters, um, collect this secret tape, you know, score this many points, hit these trash cans, all this, you know, random stuff. But you only get two minutes to do it. Um, and then when you accomplish enough of them, you unlock the next stage. And that seems to be all the game is. There's not like a... Yeah, for the most part. Um, yeah, so I'm not thing, used to this, that. <laughs> I played it at launch, and the thing that I ran into that kind of I realized the reason I started enjoying Skate more is that with Tony Hawk, it's more about like button mashing combos in the air and going crazy and trying to get like a super high score. Mm. Whereas with Skate, it's more about naturally comboing into things, which felt a little bit more realistic. Um, and yeah, to me, I was like, oh, okay. I had the muscle memory, thankfully, because I played it when I was younger. But as the levels progressed, I just got to a point where, like, oh, the only way for me to advance is to, like, look up. You have to press this combo at this point and do this and do this. And, like, okay. it just wasn't fun to me. Yeah. Um, whereas with, like, Skate, you naturally progress into, like, oh, I can add in a second move here. And then I can go into a third move after I come off of this half pipe. Whereas with, like, Tony Hawk, it's like... Oh, I, did I get enough air? Brrr, like smashing as many buttons and pushing as many directions as possible. Um, I can see that. That I, yeah. I'm just I, I'm so bad at it still that like I haven't even like begun to like really try to like actually do like the cooler string of tricks yet. It, I'm just like trying to like navigate the parks and stuff, and that's it. Well, and the thing is, I think this is something that movies and other mediums don't have to deal with as much as games where. Games advance so much in control schemes and everything where I I think you're you might remember this when I talked about I tried out the original Resident Evil well the remake to the original Mm -hmm. Resident Evil yeah and the tank controls on that I just couldn't wrap my head around it didn't feel like a natural video game experience and I was pretty much in the same boat you were where like I'm pretty good at like first person shooters and like and games in general I'm pretty skilled and it was just like, this just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know how anybody can... F- and you might not have this specific uh, thought, but I was like, how can anybody find this enjoyable? Like, I just didn't have a good time. Um, yeah. Which, obviously, people who played Resident Evil when it came out are like, are you blasphemous? It's like classic Resident Evil. Like, there's no other way to play it. Uh, and I'm like, nah, maybe you can just do regular controls in that game and camera angles and stuff. So Yeah. I'm feeling more like, like I'm missing out because, like, there's so much here that, like, I want to do all this stuff it's asking me to do, but I just, I just can't. Like I'm unable to. Um, and, and maybe this is my karma for like enjoying Dark Souls so much. And there's so many people who like it's, uh, you know, too demanding, and people just are like, I want to go explore the world, but it's just too difficult. <laughs> um, maybe that, I kind of feel like that way, where I'm like, I want to like do all these objectives and unlock more gear and stuff i think it'd be a great time even though there's no story there's nothing like larger going on like i kind of said it's sort of just here are the levels go nuts um it's good to have those games where you can hot like i have 15 minutes before i have to go do something it's that perfect type of game yes uh you can just hop in and there's no expectations and for you personally you can give yourself goals of like okay i want to try to get this done and it's not some overarching thing where like oh i have to do this 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 you're just like i'm gonna hop in let's see if i can get you know these trash cans or these skate letters that i'm missing yeah I, i think it's perfect for that and the positive and the negative with this game is that the, the negative is that 
Activision killed the studio that was going to make the next ones. Uh, but the positive from that, and if you want to find any silver lining, is that that means the community on this game is probably going to be there for a while because the people were so excited when this game came out and they don't have anywhere else really to go. And this game is available on current consoles. So there's that as well. Like, I don't, knock on wood, I don't see Microsoft obviously going to have Activision. I don't see them shutting it down anytime soon, which I think is good. Um, and yeah, you know, I think that's an interesting thing too that you and I don't come across as people who play video games as often as we do is we rarely get into these places where we're learning a new skill set in a video game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty fun too in a way. Obviously, it can be frustrating for sure, but I do think there is some fun to be had with that of like teaching yourself how to get these mechanics and play something <laughs> that uh people got used to like 20, 30 years ago, you know? Yeah. And so like I think I'll keep it installed <laughs> and uh you know, every so often like hop in there and just um mess around. Like I think it's really cool. I really like what it's doing. I just got to get better at it. And you know, be- but even still best case scenario, I can I can picture what you said about like you know, you get to a certain point where you're kind of just um I can already see the way like the scores get multiplied and how it would incentivize doing as many stringing as many things together as you, as you can. Um which at some point I think I would feel like it's just too exaggerated and too arcadey where I might lose. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like coming to oh, terms sure. with like that's what I did. I'm like I'm not going to get to that point. I don't want to waste my time. I had fun with the game. But yeah. up up until that point, I I had a blast with it. Just you come to that natural point of like, yeah, I'm going to be real with myself. And I think it's important for your mental health in some aspects too as crazy as that sounds is like yeah, I'm just not going to stress about this. I'm just going to move on, you know. Move and on. with it being on a service as opposed to you purchasing it, it makes it easier uh, to make the jump as well. So Yeah. So I, I messed around with that for a little while. Um, I messed around with Tunic for a little while. And, man, it's so cool. I love that I can't understand the language that they made up. Like, people talk to you and you pick up an item and it's just some nonsense letters and gibberish to tell you what the item is and you don't know you just gotta figure it out apparently um and the it it, it feels a lot like death store but just slower um i think death store know. ruined tunic for me i think i went into yeah. tunic and i enjoyed it but i don't think in my opinion i don't think t- obviously it's made by one person but i just think death store was so good that playing a game so similar obviously they have their nuances and their differences but I think it kind of ruined me. And that's why I started. I enjoyed it. And then I was like, I just don't feel like playing it. You know what I mean? That, and I think I'll go back I'm to Tunic at. and maybe you're in the same place. It's like, it even like the art style is even similar to Death Store in, in a lot of ways, which is odd. But yeah, it's I, I get up to this first boss and, it, and it's a challenge. Like it's taken me, I've died a lot and it feels odd because it's so slow. Um, but for some reason, it's just hard. The way, I think my, maybe part of my problem is like your hitbox you know, for how much range you have on your melee weapons is just there's not much there. You gotta be right in someone's grill to yeah. hit them. And then hits against you just do so much and it I don't know, something about that. So I'm I got up to the the first boss and he just absolutely demolishes me. And I'm kinda like, I don't know if I wanna keep pushing through this. Um I do like what it's like what's going on. Like it's hard to find like any like serious um complaints. Um, I think you might be right though that like it coming off of Death Door like not even a year ago this feels maybe it has been a full year since then whatever yeah something about it I don't know I might not go back um, so I, I I was jumping back and forth between that and Tony Hawk for a little bit and then I, I jumped into Doom Eternal um, finally because I've been that's kind of been in the backlog that's on my backlog too <laughs> yeah and, um, I don't know I I think I just need to take, I only spent maybe 20 minutes in there and I just, it didn't click for some reason. Um, I think that will, if I just sit down and give it a bit more time, I think I'll get into it um, and enjoy the music a little more and start speeding up um, like that game wants you to do. Um, But yeah, I think there's probably been a few other things I've been jumping around and that haven't stuck. So that's, it it might just be like, yeah, we just got to play some Cult of the Lamb and just, grow if you commit to it i'll I'll definitely pick it up like that's a hundred percent i think it's a game i'll for sure get to by the end of the year but if you decide Mm -hmm. to like 
I'm going to hop in this week or this weekend or whatever. Just let me know, and I'll, I'm hopping in too. I think we have a fun conversation next week. All right. I'll tell you when when I've actually downloaded it. It's like there. Okay. Confirmed. It's <laughs> happening. No doubts anymore. I'll, I'll ping you immediately. Like, let's go. Cool. Um, What's the next big release that both of us are interested in? God of War, right? Definitely God I, of I War. Because I have, like, Pokemon and stuff, obviously. In November. But... You got Pokemon. Uh, I'm looking back at my Plague Tale Requiem. I, that, is that before? Yeah, it's October. October. Yeah. God of War is November. Uh, Gotham Knights, actually. Um, we, We've talked about it a lot. Kind of like, we'll see on that. <laughs> yeah. I am. Hogwarts. Uh... Oh, yeah, Hogwarts. I am, like, teetering. So, Lego Skywalker Saga. Obviously, like, a thousand percent want to get into that. It's been going on sale down to, like, 45 bucks a lot like almost permanently since it's been released but i just feel like it's gonna go down even further even deeper sale in the next few months so i'm kind of like i already that. own that game so whenever you do decide to hop in we can do like let's play this saga and we can talk about yeah. it because i already own it i haven't fully dove in yet but i own it so like go through the the original trilogy and then and then discuss um yeah hollow knight you mentioned if that ends up coming out this year Obviously, we'll both do that as soon as it gets here. Yeah, I guess after God of War, though, there's not like anything huge. Unless I mean, God, God of War is I... November, oh. so there rarely is anything after that. Yeah. I guess the only thing would be like Stalker 2 is going to be December, but that got delayed. Mm. Atomic Callisto Heart Protocol. might be December. Uh, wow, none of us know. have Callisto Protocol on the. Oh, yeah, Callisto Protocol. Yeah, that's December as well. I'm Part of me is like in the back of my brain. I'm like, ah, oh, that game might get delayed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope not, but and I can't uh, afford it. We're too tight in fantasy. Right? I, I, I'm risk I can't averse. afford it. Uh, anyways, no, I picked up Callisto Protocol. Oh, you did? Or at least I have Shoot. a bid. It should be going through. I have a bid on it. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Should I don't know when bids go through. I think it's Saturday. Oh no, it says right here: four minutes and fifty-three seconds. Holy crap! That's weird timing. Or it says they'll be revealed in four minutes. So maybe they're already locked in. I don't know. Huh. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm excited for the NFL season to start. Really stoked oh, about yeah. that. Uh, next week, College like I said, we're going to be going over our gaming predictions and see where we sit so far. Going to be interesting to look at those and how badly a lot of that stuff is aged, as always. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for listening. If you can, head over to any of the podcast services you use and leave us a review. It definitely helps us out. We're on you know Google Play. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen to, definitely please help us out. Uh, we're on YouTube at Controlled Interest. Search us up. We'll pop up. You can subscribe, hit the bell notification so you never miss an upload. Like the video, comment, do all that stuff. Twitter, you can follow us collectively at CTRL, INT. It's Controlled Interest Abbreviated. You can follow us individually. Dom is at OB Dom Kenobi, but the O and OB is the number zero, not the letter O. And I am at Jared Weich, J-E-R-R-A-D-W-Y-C-H-E. Other than that, thank you guys for listening. And uh, we'll catch you guys in episode 252. Bye.